Welcome back on this documentary by the Tollup Foundation. Uh, today we're going to do a deep dive into a really fascinating historical figure. You might not know, Donatus Magnus. Donatus is such a pivotal figure because he really sits at the intersection of the rise of Christianity, the power struggles within the Roman Empire, and also the, you know, really enduring spirit of the Amazi or Berber people. Okay, so let's unpack all of that a bit. I, I know a little bit about the Roman Empire, of course, but who were the Amazi people? And what role did they play in this story? Yeah, so the Amazi, they're often referred to as Berbers, and they're an indigenous people of North Africa. Oh. They have an incredibly rich and diverse culture that predates the Roman Empire by centuries. And in Donato's time, many Amazi had converted to Christianity, but they often found themselves at odds with this kind of Roman-dominated church. Hmm. So we've got this backdrop of cultural and religious tension already. Right. Where does Donatus fit into all of this? Well, Donatus was amazing himself, and he rose to prominence as a bishop within the church. He was known for his scholarship, his powerful preaching, and most importantly, his unwavering commitment to his people and their beliefs. And I think it's fascinating. We know that he was born in 273 AD in a, a Roman outpost called Cassinigre. Right which is now modern-day Degreen in Algeria. That's right. So imagine a place that still holds traces of the Roman Empire where Donatus first came into the world. Yeah, it's really a reminder that history isn't just something you read in textbooks. It's woven into the very fabric of the places that we live in. It really is. And for Donatus, this place, North Africa, was at the heart of his identity and his struggle. So what was it about Donatus that made him stand out? Was it just his charisma? Or was there something more to his message that resonated with the Amazi people? Well, I think it was a combination of factors, but Donatus really challenged the authority of the Roman church on multiple levels. Mm -hmm. You know, he questioned the legitimacy of certain leaders like Sicilian, the Bishop of Carthage, who was seen as too closely aligned with Roman interests. But more than that, Donatus' theology, his understanding of Christianity itself, differed in really significant ways from Roman orthodoxy. Ah, that's right. Our sources mentioned that he viewed Jesus as a prophet of God, not the Son of God. Exactly. Which directly contradicted the doctrine of the Trinity held by the Roman Church. Exactly. And, you know, this distinction might seem subtle on the surface, but it had really profound implications. Yeah. For Donatus, it was about asserting the autonomy of the Amazi church, their right to interpret their faith free from Roman control. And this wasn't just a theological debate, was it? It became a flashpoint for this growing resentment towards Roman rule. Absolutely. Donatus's message resonated very deeply with those who felt marginalized and oppressed by the Roman Empire. Mm. He became a symbol of resistance, not just against religious authority, but against political and social injustice as well. And it feels like the Roman Emperor Diocletian really poured gasoline on the fire with his great persecution in 303 AD. Yeah. Wasn't that an attempt to wipe out Christianity altogether? It was a brutal persecution. It targeted Christians across the empire, but it did have a particularly profound impact in North Africa. Right. It really exposed a deep rift within the Christian community. Some chose to cooperate with the Romans, hiding their faith to survive. Right. But others, and particularly the Amazi, saw this as a betrayal, a compromise of their core beliefs. And there's this really fascinating story about Bishop Mansurius of Carthage, who was aligned with Rome, and he claimed to have hidden scriptures to protect them. Right. But Donatus and his followers saw this as cowardly. Yeah, this incident became very symbolic of that divide, you know. For Donatus and his followers, true faith demanded resistance, a willingness to stand up for their beliefs, even in the face of persecution. So we have Donatus, this charismatic and influential figure, speaking out against the Roman church, inspiring resistance among the Amazai people. Right. What happens next? Does this all lead to an outright rebellion? Well, things escalate very quickly after Mansurius dies, and the appointment of Sicilian, a figure supported by Rome as the new bishop of Carthage, further inflames the situation. So Donatus and his supporters were already suspicious of the Roman church's influence, and this just seemed to confirm their fears. Right. You know, and it's important to remember that this wasn't just about who held a particular office. Yeah. This was about who had the power to shape the religious and cultural landscape of North Africa. And for Donis and the Amazi, it was about self-determination, yeah. the right to practice their faith and live according to their own traditions, you yeah. know, their own traditions and way of life. Donis, uh, 
he was never one to shy away from a challenge. Right. He led a group of mostly Amazai bishops to directly challenge Sicilian's legitimacy. Wow. And they even appealed to the Roman emperor himself, Constantine. That's incredible. He took his case right to the heart of the empire. That's right. He even traveled to Rome for a council in 313 AD. Wow. And then to another one in Arles in 314 AD, hoping to plead his case and gain recognition for the Amazi Church. So did these appeals work? Did Constantine side with Donatus? Well, unfortunately, no. Both councils ultimately sided with Sicilian upholding the authority of the Roman Church. That must have been a huge setback for Donatus and his followers. It was, but they didn't give up. Donatus returned to North Africa even more determined to resist Roman control. And it's really around this time that things start to heat up. So how did the conflict escalate? Did it turn violent? Well, Constantine initially tried to appease Donatus. He even offered him money and promises, hoping to kind of pacify him and prevent a full-blown rebellion. So it sounds like Constantine understood the potential threat that Donatus mm. posed. After all, he had a huge following among the Amazai, who were a significant part of the North African population. Exactly. But Donatus wasn't interested in compromise. He and his followers saw this as a fight for their very survival, for their right to practice their faith and live according to their own traditions. Mm -hmm. And when Constantine realized that appeasement wasn't going to work, he resorted to force. And that backfired, didn't it? Spectacularly. Hmm. In 317 AD, Constantine's attempts to crush the Donatists sparked widespread unrest and violence across North Africa. It was more than just a religious dispute. Now it was a full-blown rebellion against Roman rule. Were the Amazi people ready to take up arms against the mighty Roman Empire? Well, they'd been enduring Roman oppression for centuries, and Donatus' message resonated with their deep-seated desire for freedom and self-determination. Hmm. You know, he gave voice to their grievances, both religious and social. And when the Romans tried to silence him, they were essentially silencing the aspirations of an entire people. That's powerful. Yeah. So this wasn't just a theological squabble. It was a fight for their identity, mm -hmm. their culture, their right to exist on their own terms. Precisely. And it's really important to understand this context to fully appreciate Donatus' significance. You know, he yeah. wasn't just a religious leader. He was a symbol of a maze I resistance, a national hero who dared to stand up to an empire. Our sources mentioned a group called the Circumcellians. Who were they? And what role did they play in the rebellion? Yeah, the Circumcellions were a militant group often described as the fighting arm of the Donatist movement. They were fiercely loyal to Donatus and saw him as a divinely appointed leader. They targeted Roman officials, wealthy landowners, anyone they perceived as collaborators with the empire. Wow, so they were taking the fight directly to the Romans. It must have been a chaotic and violent time. It was a period of intense upheaval with both sides committing atrocities. The Circumcellions were known for their ferocity and their willingness to die for their cause. They believed that martyrdom guaranteed them immediate entry into heaven. Wow, their dedication is astounding. But weren't they ultimately fighting a losing battle against the might of the Roman Empire? Well, in the short term, perhaps, but the Donatist Rebellion had really far-reaching consequences. It forced Constantine to recognize the power of Omeza resistance and to eventually grant them a degree of religious freedom. That's right. There was a peace agreement in 321 AD, wasn't there? There was Constantine realizing he couldn't crush the rebellion outright, was forced to make concessions. He granted the Donatists freedom of religion, hoping to quell the unrest. But this peace was very fragile, and the conflict would reignite later under Constantine's successors. It sounds like the Donatist movement was more than just a temporary uprising. It planted the seeds for future resistance movements. Absolutely. The Donatist Rebellion was a pivotal moment in North African history. It really marked the beginning of a long struggle for Amazai autonomy, a struggle that would continue for centuries, even into the Islamic era and beyond. So even though Donatus himself was eventually exiled and his movement suppressed, his legacy lived on it, inspired generations of Amazai to fight for their rights and freedoms. Exactly. Donatus became this really powerful symbol of resistance, a reminder that even the most powerful empires can be challenged by the unwavering spirit of a people determined to be free. That's an incredibly inspiring message. But it also raises the question, if Donatus was such a pivotal figure, a national hero for the Amazai, why isn't he more widely known today? That is a fascinating question, and one that really gets to the heart of how history is written and whose stories are told. You know, Donatus' legacy was deliberately suppressed by the Roman Church, who saw him as a heretic. So the victors write the history books, as they say. But thanks to the work of historians and scholars, we're able to uncover these hidden stories and give voice to those who were silenced. 
And it's crucial that we do so because Donatus' story isn't just about the past. It speaks to really enduring themes of resistance, oppression, and the fight for self-determination that are still relevant today. It makes you wonder how differently history might have unfolded if Donatus had been victorious. Would the Amazi people have achieved greater autonomy? Would the Roman Empire have crumbled sooner? These are tantalizing questions, and while we can't rewrite history, we can learn from it. You know, we can see how even seemingly small acts of resistance can have a ripple effect, inspiring future generations to fight for justice and freedom. It's a reminder that history is made by real people, individuals like Donatus, who had the courage to stand up for what they believed in, even when facing overwhelming odds. And that's a really powerful lesson for all of us. Donatus' story encourages us to question authority, to fight for what's right, and to never give up hope for a better future. You know, it's almost hard to believe that a figure as influential as Donatus could be almost forgotten by history. Why do you think someone like Augustine, a later bishop from the same region, is so much more famous, even though Donatus clearly shook the foundations of his time? Hmm. It is a question worth pondering, isn't it? And part of it might be that Augustine's writing survived. Right. While so much of Donatus's work was lost or destroyed. But it also, I think, speaks to the power of narrative, you know, of who gets to control the story. You're saying that because Augustine aligned with the Roman church, which ultimately triumphed his perspective, became the dominant one. Exactly. History is often written by the victors. Right. But thanks to, you know, dedicated scholars and researchers, we can piece together those alternative narratives, those voices that were silenced or marginalized. And Donatus' story is a powerful reminder that there's always more than one side to every story. Right. It encourages us to dig deeper, to question what we think we know, and to seek out those untold stories. Think about it this way. What if we had access to Donatus' own writings? How might that change our understanding of early Christianity, of the know. dynamics between the Roman Empire and the Amazai people, even of the events leading to the fall of the Roman Empire itself? It's almost like a missing piece of a puzzle. Yeah. We can see the outline, the impact he had, but we're left with so many unanswered questions. And that's what makes history so fascinating, is that it's not just about memorizing dates and names. Yeah. It's about engaging with the mysteries, with the complexities of the past, yeah. and using those insights to better understand our present. So what do you think is the most important takeaway for our listener today? What can we learn from Donatus' life and legacy? Well, I think Donatus' story challenges us to think critically about power, mm -hmm. about who holds it and how it's used. He reminds us that resistance can take many forms, mm. you know, from peaceful protests to armed rebellion. Yeah. And most importantly, he shows us that even in the face of overwhelming odds, it's possible to stand up for what you believe in, to fight for justice and freedom, and to leave a legacy that inspires generations to come. He was a true trailblazer, a man who dared to challenge the most powerful empire in the world. And even though his story was nearly lost to history, we can still draw strength and inspiration from his unwavering commitment to his people and his beliefs. Absolutely. So the next time you encounter a dominant narrative, a single version of events, remember Donatus Magnus. Right. Remember that there are always other perspectives, other stories waiting to be told. Mm. And who knows, maybe you'll be the one to uncover them. That's what we're all about here on The Deep Dive, right? Encouraging you to think for yourself, to question assumptions, and to explore those hidden corners of history. Thanks for joining us on this journey. We'll see you next time for another deep dive into a fascinating and often overlooked corner of the past.